um, and she fought Noble not just up here, but then took her time when she was in Springfield to give him some more punches down there. I give you right. Kelly Cassidy. Right. I get to follow Jan all the time, and she is an incredibly tough act to follow, but I couldn't be luckier to have her as a partner and as a teammate and as a role model in so many ways. I've been following you for years, and I'm really lucky to follow you in this role. Um, I may not be quite as exciting as she is. I will tell you that right after that conversation with Betsy, and I reached out to some folks and started poking the bear a little bit, because look at this room. Like, we are the luckiest people in the world to represent communities like this. Um, I, I summoned the noble lobbyists to my office. Um, and I, I, because they, well, they wanted to, they had met with others and that I wasn't going to be here. I was going to be down in Springfield. So I asked their lobbyists to come to my office. And, and I said, let me start with some friendly advice. You don't want to mess with Rogers Park. <laughs> <laughs> Materials. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't care. You don't want to mess with Rogers Park. When I met with them on Friday, they said we should have listened earlier. <laughs> so you guys did this. Um, you definitely made it not work their So when they told me that they were withdrawing their application, I asked for how long? Good question. I asked a couple of questions they weren't happy to be asked. One of them was that, was, was for how long? And if and when you do start to look again, what's your process going to look like? How is it going to be different than the last time? How are we going to avoid a debacle like this next time? So they are, they are open to a better process. They're open to a longer waiting period. What's on the table right now is five years, and that's not unreasonable. Um, but it's not five years like a ticking time bomb that they're going to come back in five years. It's a minimum of five years before they even take a look. And when they do come back, they're not going to do it in the way they did. So we, are, we, we won a great victory there. The second question I asked them that they really didn't want to be asked, because I don't know if many of you know about the second half of the Noble issue. They are relocating a school from the near north side, and they're looking for another location. Right now they're looking at the old French school on um, Irving and Lakeshore Drive. That, that application has not been withdrawn. It, withdrawn, it's just deferred, it's two distinct issues. I have some sympathy for the families in the near north school because they need to know where they're gonna go in the fall and it is a slightly different conversation. Um, but one thing they asked me was, well, how do you feel about that now? And I, I said what I think Jan would probably say too, once I join a coalition, I'm in it. Yeah. Just because I got my win doesn't mean that that part is over. But I went on to say, let's pretend you get approval for that. How are you gonna market that school? Where are you gonna market that school? And I got the face of, I was hoping she wasn't gonna ask. They have agreed not to market to our neighborhood schools. They will not come into Rogers Park to see students for that site if they get an opportunity to open. As Jan said, it's time for next steps, because now we've awakened a wonderful beast. This beast shouldn't just be about saying no to Noble. This beast should be about saying yes to the amazing resources that we've brought to bear and what we can do to make our schools even better, even stronger, feed into what's happening with Chad. Who, I mean, you talked about charter schools were supposed to be laboratories for innovation. This guy is doing such amazing things at Sullivan. putting out kids who are a little bit of trouble, Chad's finding a way to bring restorative justice practices into that school, into, into the community surrounding Sullivan, into our larger community. Because when you learn it in school, you take it home, you take it to the workplace, you take it to the rest of your community. Those restorative justice practices are, what are what's going to make this community better, stronger, and safer in the long run. This is a generational change that he is bringing about at Sullivan, and it is nothing short of evolutionary. It is change to our system. You bring the you take the criminal justice system out of those kids' lives.
Okay, so with Inez, um, she said, we need a website. 